Hey guys, how are you today? This is Jim Prusak, physical therapist here at The Pain PT. And today's topic is don't forget about your emotions. Don't forget about your emotions. And I want to come back to this again because at the heart of this whole chronic symptom condition you're going through, once you've ruled out any structural cause in your body, then what we're looking at is this limbic brain and in particular your amygdala. Uh, the studies coming out in the last number of years have really implicated the amygdala as an area of your brain that can produce actual pain in the absence of any injury, in the absence of anything wrong in your body. So it can produce not only pain, but it can produce other physical symptoms. And so we know this amygdala uh, now uh, sits right at the center of one of the reasons why we have these conditions. And I've talked to you guys before about the amygdala. It's the home of negative emotions. It's the home of the generation and production of negative emotions. And if you think about it this way, what the science has shown, they've actually validated Dr. Sarno's approach that, look, um, what you're feeling a lot of times in your body are emotions. Um, yes, they feel like symptoms. Uh, yes, they represent like a physical symptom, but they're actually just emotions. And this is hard for some people to really um, grasp or understand or believe, you could say. But um, the, stu the studies are bearing that out now, that this amygdala, which produces fear, which produces uh, anger, produces sadness, those three primary negative emotions and subsets of those, any emotion really, what, that, what can happen to that is that emotional generation that gets produced by your amygdala can cause uh, symptoms. Now, if we stop and look at what are symptoms, what is a symptom in your body? Well, it's, you could call it a feeling, right? Um, it's something you feel in your body. A symptom's not a thought. A symptom is a feeling, or you can say it's made up of sensations. Now, what's the definition of an emotion? Well, an emotion is also a feeling, and it's also made up of physical sensations. An emotion is not a thought either. So emotions and symptoms really do um, intertwine and overlap because of actually they're both feelings in your body. And what we know now in the science is that these emotions can cause what appears to be a, f a symptom in your mind. It, it feels like a physical symptom. Or you just recognize that sometimes when these emotions are generated, they're not felt in a very classical way in the body. I mean, they're not felt like, okay, I feel it in my chest, I feel it in my stomach, I feel it in my face. Um, we have studies showing this now that people with anxiety um, and people who um, have difficulties with anger, let's say, or even grief and sadness processing these feelings all those things, are so you could say anxiety and depression, those would be the two biggest mental health disorders that are made up of emotions, that both anxiety and depression have been shown in many studies to cause very real physical symptoms. Now again, these physical symptoms are representing anxiety and depression. Okay, that's what we need to understand, that these physical symptoms are anxiety and depression which means they are fear, which is anxiety, which means they are anger and sadness, which is depression. Okay, so we have to understand this, guys, and this, we have the science now to show this. This is super important, why emotions are really important. And it's validating the work of Dr. Sarno. And again, it's hard for people to understand this or believe this, but if you step back and think about it, well, you go, wow, it kind of makes sense because you know what? These symptoms I'm feeling um, again, there are sensations, there are feelings in my body, and wait a second, emotions are the same thing. Is it possible that this thing that I think is a physical symptom is actually maybe an emotion or a conglomerate of emotions? Well, the answer is yes. And then when you get somebody's history as to what's going on, which again, I hear so many histories, uh, I should recount them on and give you guys a video of just the different stories because Every time I get the history of somebody, once we go through their physical history, 
there's always a stress emotional component to it. There's always some trigger or something going on in that person's life that predisposed typically the physical symptom starting. Almost always, okay? And in the cases where it's not happening, meaning somebody has a real injury and they end up with chronic pain or chronic symptoms, they typically usually have some anxiety or depression or had a history of that in their life. So that, again, is emotions playing in and making the symptoms become chronic. So we can have a real physical injury, which is an actual physical injury in your body, and if it doesn't go away, it becomes chronic. And we know now from the studies the reason why it becomes chronic is not because of the body. Um, we got some good data on back pain, and we'll use that as an example. That would back pain, um, people who transition to chronic pain over three years, it wasn't the back that caused the pain to become chronic, it was the emotional brain, okay? So we have proof of this now, it was the emotional brain. And not only was the emotional brain um, active in causing the pain to become chronic, it was pre-existing, okay? Meaning when they took the brain scans, it was already overactivating, or you could say overly emotional, at the time the initial back pain started. Now what they didn't figure out, and which I'd be curious about, was was it the emotion in the first place that caused the back pain? And maybe not an injury or physical injury at all, you know? So they had, didn't look at that, but um, we can surmise that that is a very real possibility, especially with the data we have now that the amygdala can create pain and symptoms in the body independently of any type of injury or structural problem. Okay, so I really wanted to dive in today, guys, and go over this idea that, you know what, once you've ruled out the structural um, issues in your body, once you've ruled out any pathology, you're likely dealing with emotions, okay, that your symptoms are emotions. So if we think about it this way now, we, it changes the game completely in terms of how we want to approach this condition. We don't want to approach it as a physical problem. We don't want to think of it as symptoms. We want to think of them as emotions. Okay, and then in that light, we need to learn how to work with our emotions. And there's different strategies, right? And I've mentioned some of them. And these are the things I work on with people in, in my private coaching sessions, how to work with your emotions. So if you're interested in that, want to learn how to do that and learn how to identify for yourself what's going on, then reach out and set something up with me. But generally speaking, I just want you guys to know this, this is that the core, core thing, we got to come back to the basics. We can get lost sometimes in thinking all these other things, but at the core of neuroscience level, what we understand now from the data is the amygdala is implicated. Okay, we talked about the prefrontal cortex, that's also implicated. Both those are two, the two biggest areas of your brain that are implicated in chronic pain. So I want to come back to the amygdala again, because again, the prefrontal cortex is the thinking mind. You can, you can imagine that being the story, right? That's like the thinking, the thoughts. And you can imagine the amygdala being the heart of the story. The heart of the story is your emotions, okay? Underlies the thoughts. It underlies these symptoms, okay? And so that means anxiety, which is the form of fear, one of the most common emotions to cause chronic symptoms, okay? So your symptoms might be anxiety symptoms. Um, anger that's not dealt with in an appropriate way can also cause symptoms. We had a study that showed that in certain people, when they induced anger in these people, what they found was that these the people did not get classic anger, meaning they didn't feel heat coming up through the chest and up to the face and down the arms. They didn't get a classic version of anger. What they got was back pain. <laughs> And so we have data to show this. What they got, what they measured with EMG testing was that the back muscles went <laughs> They could see it on the test that the EMG picked up muscle contraction or you could say muscle tension, all right? Muscles became tense and then what happened? The pain came in. And the amount of anger severity was directly correlated with the amount of muscle tension, which was directly correlated with the amount of pain, the pain severity. So there you go, guys. There's a study sh implicating showing you how anger can actually come out as back pain. Now, in that case, yes, you have back pain, but what's the cause? Anger. You have anger in your back, okay? Maybe you have anxiety in your arm, maybe you have anxiety in your IBS. 
maybe you have grief and sadness in your fatigue. Okay, maybe that is what it, your symptom is. So I really want you guys to start thinking this way. This is so, so much of a transformational approach to looking at your symptoms. It's totally incredibly different than any mainstream medicine approach that is just going to look at the physical sensory nature of things or you got psychologists over here that are only going to look at anxiety and depression as separate mental problems but not in relation to physical stuff so we have these two disciplines here that have never really crossed over unfortunately and that's why we have this problem okay so that's how I got so interested in this work was that as a physiotherapist or physical therapist, I was seeing patients for, I've been a PT over 20 years, and I, it wasn't making sense, guys. I treated thousands and thousands of people in the clinic, all sorts of injuries and problems, and these chronic ones it is not making sense. And a lot of physical therapists don't want to treat chronic pain because they don't know what to do. And the reason being is because it's not a physical problem. So that's why I went out and learned all these things and studied this stuff and dealt with my own chronic issues. So that was a huge learning lesson for me. But now I'm really well equipped because I understand it. I've seen it enough times in myself and other people that to know that what we're dealing with here are emotions. Emotions, guys. Your symptoms are emotions. It sounds crazy. sounds hard to believe, but the data is bearing that out. Um, we're just getting this data coming in the last mm, couple years, maybe two, three years. So it's fresh, it's new, but what it does do is support the work that pioneering doctor, Dr. Sarno started years and years ago. He was brilliant. He figured this out that what is happening or these are emotions guys coming out of your body. So I want you to understand that. And I also want you to understand that another study that came out and I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again because it's appropriate here. In 2020, and there's been about, I don't know how many, maybe 10 or a little bit less than 10 studies that show when they can, in mice, when they can turn off the central amygdala. Okay, so this amygdala is, a, is really small. It's two of them. They're two almond-sized things in your brain. It seems so small, but it can cause all these problems. It's a part of your, it's even just a piece of your amygdala. It's not the whole thing, but... What we're finding out, it's the central part of the amygdala that has nociceptive or has physical producing qualities in it. And what they're finding now is in these mice, when they were able to turn that part of the amygdala off, okay, in the words of the neuroscientists, they profoundly shut down pain. And it was unexpected, meaning they did not expect that an emotional center of the brain the home of negative emotions would be the part of your brain that if they shut that part of your down, the physical pain would go down profoundly in the mice. Okay, so let that sink in for a minute, guys, that shutting down one part of your brain, the central amygdala, shut down all the physical pain in the mice. Okay, so what does that tell us? And I think that's the same in humans. 2020 study, so very fresh. It tells us we need to get in touch with these emotions more, guys. We need to understand emotions. Okay, we need to learn how to become more emotionally aware. It's called emotional intelligence, uh, emotional awareness and expression, or we call emotion regulation. These are all the terms they use. Again, the strategies. I've talked about some of them in my other videos, so go ahead and look at them. If you need more one-on-one -on -one support, this is an area that I really dive into with people. It's the biggest area we dive into as well as looking at the prefrontal cortex because that is going to what's going to help you with this amygdala. Okay, the prefrontal cortex is the key that unlocks the amygdala in terms of how we use it. Okay, so those two brain centers work together. All right, guys, I've been rambling on, but I really wanted to, to get to these emotions back to them today because we can sometimes lose sight of the whole picture here and what's going on. That don't lose sight of your emotions. Don't forget about your emotions. Because you know what? They're the heart of the matter here. They're the heart of the problem. They're the part of your brain that produces all this stuff. And they're the part of your brain that will solve all this stuff. So you can say that they're the cause and the cure of your problem. The amygdala and your emotions is the cause and the cure. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.